Welcome back. Uh, so we left off last lecture on the start of the Revolutionary War. Um, New York City was hit particularly hard by the war. About a quarter of the city burned down as U.S. troops were fleeing the city right at the right at the start of the conflict. Um, George Washington himself was involved in this flight, and New York was controlled primarily uh, by the British throughout the conflict. I mean, there were some spy networks that were operating within New York City, but uh, this was a British stronghold during the war. Um, at the end of the conflict, uh, tens of thousands of Americans had been killed, and um, many enslaved peoples uh, sided with the British during this conflict, because even though we like to talk about the U.S. Revolution as about being for liberty and freedom, um, for whom really matters, right? Uh, the British offered freedom to any enslaved peoples who joined their cause, about 20,000 did, while a few thousand did join with um, the United States, or what would become the United States, many more enslaved people saw the British as representing their interests in a way that the Americans were not representing their interests. Um, a little later in this conversation, we're going to talk about sort of the native relationship as well to this conflict. But um, for now, we just need to understand that you have tens of thousands of new American citizens or would-be American citizens who had died or perished during this conflict. And you have thousands and thousands of formerly enslaved people who fled with the British at the end of the war. So you have a city in ruins, you have a country in ruins, you have a loss of people power uh, to kind of rebuild this society on the verge of creating a new nation uh, with the hope of industrializing that nation. New York City was at the center of all this as the capital of the new nation. They had the largest population, they were the financial center, the largest port. And they would need workers to help maintain all that. Even though New York City lost its status as the actual political capital of the nation in 1790, it remained the financial capital. And it sought to expand on that influence and expand on that power. At this point, the city was really just the southern tip of Manhattan. North of the Lower East Side was mostly farmland um, or, or even woodland. In 1811, city leaders released what would be called the Grid Plan, which was a plan for sort of the expansion of the city out of the other, very southern tip of Manhattan. And this would organize the city into blocks and streets that we know today. While leaving much of the existing city intact, moving forward, the city designers created a number system. Every 20 blocks would be a mile. Every street would be 100 feet wide. But there was a real problem because you had to change the topography of, of the city. You had to level hills, you had to fill streams and lakes and, and ponds. And this was a, an enormous project for the time, right? And you needed workers to do that. You needed immigrants to do that. In some ways, the grid system, which would be built by immigrant labor, was accommodating immigrant labor with streets numbered as opposed to having names. It allowed for people whose English may not have been their first language to easily navigate an increasingly complicated and dense city. While the grid plan would be laid out throughout the course of the 19th century, another major project, the Erie Canal, was started in 1817 and would also require significant immigrant labor and, and develop New York City into uh, an even larger financial center requiring more immigrants to, to field increasing demands for workers in the city itself. With the United States now ignoring treaties made between the British and Native Americans before the Revolutionary War, there was a, a push westward to claim Native land, right? A push west of the Appalachian Mountains, which previously um, had been negotiated a, as something that white settlers wouldn't do um, with Native folks. But again, these treaties were tossed aside as soon as the British were defeated. And new states like Ohio and Indiana and Michigan and Wisconsin and Illinois, um, while not states yet, uh, were attracting white immigrants to their regions. Now there was a major problem for these people, and, and that was getting to these regions. This was before trains existed, planes certainly weren't a thing, cars were not a thing. So how do you get from the eastern seaboard um, to some of these places in the Midwest? And the answer at the time was you know, 
horses, right? You would it would take a forever trip to to get out there, and so there was an understanding by um, New York leaders that if they could create sort of a path through waterways between the eastern seaboard and these areas, it could both increase the pace of communication and the pace of goods traveling, but also allow for a greater quantity of goods. And if the Erie Canal was built connecting to the Hudson River, then all of those goods would travel through New York City. And immigrants were used to build this canal. Um, over 3,000 Irish workers alone were used uh, during the construction of this canal, getting paid between 37 and 50 cents a day, doing backbreaking work. I mean, there were German immigrants as well, and um, some uh, people born in the United States um, of British descent. But uh, it was immigrant labor that really was the backbone of this project. The canal opens up in 1825, making New York City seriously the center of the financial world in the United States. Uh, it's why we have the title of the Empire State. So for these massive projects like the grid plan, like the Erie Canal, you need immigrant labor. But the, the product of these uh, massive projects is that the U.S. economy and the New York economy specifically is exploding. Right, and you are beginning to industrialize, you're beginning to bring factories in, you're beginning to bring more warehouses in. You need bodies to, to kind of man these. And this is where the, the beginning of a flood of immigrants in the 19th century starts. Rosie, did you like that episode more than the last one? Yeah?